Welcome everyone to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm Damien from RKB Paranormal. And this week I have a very special guest. I have my good friend Lee Pig from Medics from Paranormal. Lee, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, th- Damien. Thanks for having me here. Of course. I've been wanting to get you on the show for a, for a whole minute now, and it's finally finally worked out. Um, for those that don't know, I met Lee, I guess it was April of last year at an event at a little old place in Gallatin, Tennessee called Rosemont. And uh, I'm not very big on public events, but, you know, my stepson wanted to go to, the, to something. And so I took him to this event. Medics for Paranormal was hosting at Rosemont and he had a blast. And I met Lee and and I met our good friend Eric Freeman Sims that night, too. And uh, talk about that experience uh, that night, because I know you really got a kick out of some of the stuff Jake was capturing. Well, I mean, it was a really good active night. It really was. I got to meet a lot of wonderful people that came all over. Uh, for those of you that don't know about Rosemont, they were famous for raising thoroughbred horses. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. wasn't like a slave plantation or anything like that. One of the best EVPs was actually caught that night, and I wish I had it uploaded to play it, but it was of an actual horse winning. Well, yeah. There ain't been a horse on that plantation or on that house property in 20 years, but sure enough, it's you know, just like it was right outside the wall mm-hmm. that we were at. Do you remember that? You were in uh, there. Yeah, I remember playing it. That was some crazy shit, man. That was one of the coolest things I've ever heard. Yeah, it really was. Um, we was investigating in the office of the uh, the owner of the place. It was Mr. Guild. I believe it was Mr. Guild, right? Mm-hmm. I think so, oh, yeah. yeah. So I have Joe Con, Joe Con Guild. Mm-hmm. And um, your stepson, he was actually sitting at his desk in the office. Mm-hmm. We had set up a flashlight, and it was pointed right at him. And all of a sudden, that flashlight lit up, and it illuminated him. <laughs> so we started interacting with the flashlight a little bit, asking questions. Joe Con, do you enjoy Somebody being at your desk with no response. Do you want him to get up out of your desk? It shines up and lights on him. <laughs> and at that point, he gets up and he walks yeah. away. And that was one of the funnest, funnest yeah. little incidents that I ever had in there. Right. And I remember we was in a, I think uh, when you first walk in, you had the big open area Water. right there. Yeah. And you were doing the flashlight test again. And Jake had kind of crouched down just to kind of video it. And you said something about that time that flashlight went rolling off the table, and he that was thing, like, <laughs> "That thing took a nose dive off of there." Is what that done? And I scared everybody in there because it echoed throughout the room, and the flashlight right. was still shining. Yeah, but he, uh, uh, he he talked about that night for about two months after that. Just just he just how much he enjoyed it, and he's been with us a couple of different times after that. So, um, how did you initially get involved in Rosemont? Uh, Rosemont, it was through Eric Freeman Sims. He actually knew the director at the time, and he actually asked if we wanted to come up and do an event. So we actually agreed to, went up there and met Eli at the time, mm-hmm. and things just kind of come together, and we ended up, you know, planning that event that night. Right. Uh, it was right after COVID. It was really hard to um, to sell it out, but, you know, you know, it's kind of like if you build it, they will come. Right. So we set it up, and everybody came in. It was a great night. I never heard one bad thing about it. A lot of people had activity. And, you know, talking about that night, something else that I found very interesting, during inter, like in between the investigations, you would have these people, they'd be outside smoking, outside the restrooms or whatever, you know, just getting a breath of fresh air. And more than one, I know of two, looked at me, where's the closest horse? I heard a horse up in the background. <laughs> you know, and they're actually, and the, like I said, the fact that the place actually raised the horses right. was um, was impressive. And there's a lot that's actually in behind the house. They say there's a lot of dead horses buried there. So, oh, I mean, wow. yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, uh, that, like I said, that 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 horse EVP you caught, I think it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever heard. So, I really wish I had that uploaded. Though. <laughs> Well, anybody that is interested, I think it's on your on your Facebook page, right? It is. It is. All medics right. for Paranormal. And medics, the number four paranormal. Right. So, all right. Um, all right. so we're going to go ahead and backtrack a little bit. I kind of jumped the gun there. Um, that's all good. Um, what kind of got you interested in the paranormal? What was like one of your very first experiences that kind of got the gears turned and says, man, I kind of like to chase after this? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a story. Growing up, I grew up in a house that had a lot of activity. At the time, I did not know what it was. I didn't realize that it was just kind of a part of everyday life. And it might be something as simple as, you know, walking down the so you're hearing something walking down the hallway, you look down the hallway and there's nothing there. It's, you know, like I said, I didn't know Jack from Jack on that. But when I was about 16, a friend of mine, buddy, his name was Jonathan. He was actually up at my house. We were kind of in the backyard just goofing off. My folks were out of town and I was there by myself. And he says, who was in your house? 
I said, what are you talking about? He said, there's somebody just walked in front of your kitchen window. I said, there ain't nobody in that house. He says, yeah, I saw it. I swear to God, I saw it. I said, well, come on, I'll show you. I ain't going in there, he says. <laughs> so <laughs> that's one of the first first real, I don't know, things that actually caught a red flag at that point. Right. So, so I kind of, you know, just in, started investigating a little bit, reading it about it. Then all of a sudden on TV, these paranormal shows start popping up like wildfire. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to jump ahead a little while. You know, I've kind of just done a lot of reading, done lot, watching shows, trying to figure out what's real, what ain't. And um, when I went to work for who I work for now, I'm a paramedic for Metro Nashville Fire Department. Mm -hmm. I worked with a lady named Lori Thurman, and she found out that I was into this, and she's been to different ghost hunts and stuff. And she said, hey, there's a public ghost hunting down on Monego Mountain. Do you want to go to it? And I said, sure, why not? You know, I'm off. So we pack up. It was right before Halloween. We were going to camp out. It was at a haunted campground up there in Tracy City. Mm -hmm. So we got up there, and it was the one night. I'm not kidding. The night before, it stormed. And after that, you know how the weather drops? Right. It was freezing ass cold. <laughs> but um, So we still did it. We went up there. We had uh, we set up the um, all the heaters and stuff like that in the tent. But anyway, um, we went to one of uh, a haunted bakery in there, and they were leading us around. You know how it is on the public investigations. Uh -huh. And I caught my first EVP that I actually recall ever getting. One of the, um, one of the uh, I don't know, the host, I guess, that was leading the tour, mm -hmm. he was asking us questions. He's like, you know, if you can interact with this equipment, you know, it's not going to bother you or anything like that, I promise you. And I get a very clear EVP. It says, I'm here. Nice. You know, so it's something was announced in that. So anyway, the next location was a cemetery down there in Tracy City, and I set my EVP recorder, my voice recorder, rather, up on a headstone. And they started doing, you know, a lot of things. And I was just going to record the whole entire thing and decipher it later. So anyways, then it's on the headstone over here to my left, over here to the right. They are actually trying to get an EVP capture, which, which they did. I forgot what it said, but they got one. And then all of a sudden, this lady was behind me. She, I heard something hit. And this lady behind me, she says, what was that? And she looked down, and there's a voice recorder on the ground. Huh. So she reached down and she picks it up and I said, that's my voice recorder. And there wasn't nobody over here by this stone, something. And you, when we, we went back to listen to it and you can hear it, it slid across that rock, that headstone, and you can tell it had some force behind it. Right. And when it hit the ground, it actually hit the stone of another marker. Oh, wow. So, um, I guess after that weekend right there, that's when I'm like, you know what? I want to find out what this was. I want to find out what we're dealing with, you know, see right. what's out there. <laughs> so that right there, I know it's a long story, but that's really kind of how I got into, um, well, where I'm at now. Right. And so where you are now, with the name of your team, Medics for Paranormal, you've obviously had that connection with the paramedic field. So how did you kind of incorporate that? Incorporate that? Did you kind of just say, you know what, I'm a paramedic. This is what I'm going to name my team. How, how did you come up with the team name and how does kind of that come about? Well, whenever I first came up with the team, I did it with uh, Paula. Uh -huh. you know, I'll tell you more about her in a little bit. But anyway, so we uh, we figure, okay, we are paramedics. We help people throughout the day. We go into people's homes. We do whatever we got to do to help them out at their worst time. Right. And um, why don't we just incorporate that into the paranormal? So we mm -hmm. come up with the name Medics for Paranormal. And our logo was living or working with the living and the dead. Right. So, you know, um, we all had some, all paramedics have had some paranormal activity actually on the job, mm -hmm. which I can tell you about that in a little bit. But anyway, so. Initially, we had four members in my team, and we were all medics. So it just kind of made sense. Medics, four, four members. Paranormal. All right. All right. Well, now I understand the four. Okay. And. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we started out with four. Right. And I remember you at one point telling me about um, some kind of experience you guys had in, like, the ambulance house or something. Well, the first time that I actually uh, investigated with Paula. We were working for an ambulance service here south in South Nashville. That ambulance company, about a year prior to me starting there, they had an ambulance that had had a fatal accident on the interstate. Mm -hmm. It had veered off the road and hit a T-Dot truck, and they said that, uh, was, I don't remember what they said the cause of it, but the paramedic and the patient in the back, they perished in the accident. Mm. So they took that old ambulance, and they put it in an old wash bay over at the ambulance service and sealed it off, and it sat mm -hmm. over there for over a year. So... Paula said that, you know, she was a supervisor at the time, so she kept saying she heard noises and things like that. So I thought, you know what? It's a voice recorder. I'm going to bring a voice recorder. It's stick in my pocket. 
And um, at that night, we actually tried to get an EVP mm -hmm. at the at the ambulance service. That was the first time we ever probably investigated her and I. Oh wow! And we didn't catch anything, but you know, we right. tried. And right. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, it's worth a shot, and you never know. You could go back there one day, and you could you could capture something kind of mind blowing. So you never know. <clears throat> Well, you know what I say? It's all a big fishing trip. You know, you're going to catch your line. You're going to catch something or not. Absolutely. And uh, you said you've had some experiences while you've been working. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, just, um, okay, for example, um, not too long ago, I went to a house. I forgot what the reason was. But anyway, I walk into the house. There's tarot cards laid on the, on the table, the coffee table. There's candles lit. And this woman, she's having some kind of episode. I don't remember if it's chest pain, breathing problem, or what. Mm -hmm. But walking into the house, there's no air conditioner on. And I, because I, I checked that, you know, I'm trying to debunk anything. Mm -hmm. So there was no air conditioner on. It was in the midsummer. It was about 85, 90 degrees out there. And it was freezing as cold in this house. And you could, there was candles were like blowing, like, you know, the flame was just kind of, you know, moving. Mm -hmm. But there was no source of any kind of air movement. So it's that at that moment, whenever you feel something come up on the back of you and it breathes on the back of your neck or something, it makes them hair stick straight up. Uh, that was one most definitely. So um, we kind of got out of there in kind of a hurry because we didn't know exactly what we were dealing with, you know, whether it was going to be anything dark or anything, what she was into. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was probably one of the first ones. I haven't really seen anything, but I will tell you, since I started working at the fire department, some of these fire halls, they're pretty active. Oh, really? Yeah. The, I'll tell you about the first time that I actually used an uh, SLS camera, the static light sensor. Mm -hmm. So um, I built it myself, and I ordered all the components for it. And um, I was working in South Nashville one night, and it was about 18 degrees. And I thought, you know what? I just got all this stuff. I'm going to take it with me. Maybe we're not going to be busy, and I'll get to put it together. So um took it out to the fire hall. And like I said, it was about 18 degrees. I think we ran two calls that night. Well, the captain there, his name was Bubba Owens, really, really nice man. He asked me, he said, if you don't mind me asking, what are you building? And I told him what it was. And he's like, that is pretty awesome. He said, me and my wife have been to Thomas House. Me and my wife have been to investigations at other places. And that's just fascinating. Mm -hmm. So he sat out there and we talked about the paranormal because, you know, everybody loves it. And I love talking about it. I'll talk about it all day long. Right. So I got that SLS put together and fired it up. The first thing that we saw right in front of the camera was his, his car, you know, his captain's car. And beyond that was nothing but a white center block wall. Up on that wall, there sat a figure. I said, Bubba, come over here. Look at this. Are you seeing this? And he's like, yeah, what am I looking at? And I said, look right here. And I pointed to the, he's like, who is that? And I'm like, I don't know who that is. But, you know, let's, um, let's, you know, let's play with this a little bit. So we started talking to the stick figure, you know, and I asked it to wave and it would throw a hand up and it'd go back down. And like I said, it was just like it was sitting up there. And there was no way that it could be a false positive because, I mean, it wasn't nothing but a blank wall. Right. Just a white center block wall. So Bubba decides he's going to walk around the car and go over there to it. Of course, you know, it, it's gone. We can't find it. Mm -hmm. So after that, we took the camera, went all around the fire hall, and uh, never did find it. So I had this idea when we was back out into the bay, and I said, let me go get my partner. Her name was Anna. And uh, so I went in there, and I said, Anna, if you're not scared, come out here. I want to do a little experiment. So uh, she came out there, and I told her what I was doing. Of course, she was fascinated by it as well. I had three chairs set up out there where the camera was pointing, and I still got the video of this, and it's one of my favorite SLS captures ever. Uh, if you look to the – on the video, if you look to the right in that chair, you've got the captain on the engine. In the middle, you've got Anna. On the left, when I brought out a female – the stick figure comes back and it's starting to interact and i'm not kidding he leaned back in the chair had his leg crossed and you can see that arm right here just plain as you can do he was just back there just relaxing with the best of him and like i said that's a video i'd love for love to show you at some point oh, that's, that definitely sounds pretty cool man and hey. as i kept and let me say this too and as i keep going on there's people at other fire halls they're like uh won't you come out here and see what's here there's something here <laughs> so i guess right. the point of all that and i'm sorry to drag it out but the point of all that these ambulances that we run in, Damien, they see the worst of the worst. They mm -hmm. see the death. They see the birth, the trauma, the sickness, and the heartache. I mean, how can these vehicles not have some kind of energy attached to them? Right. And and it's it's kind of like a – in in some cases, it's more or less a, a traveling haunted attraction in a way. It absolutely you know? is. And maybe, maybe one of these days you'll get lucky and just be kind of sitting around on a – on a slow night and, and 
capture something in one of those ambulances or something, man. That'd be some cool stuff. Well, I try it every time I go somewhere. Like <laughs> I said, they've got to have energy with them. They do. Well, I'm sure. So, and you go back to the fire hall, open the door, and does it escape into the fire hall, or what is it? You know, right. So, when did you initially decide to actually start your team? I, I know you said you kind of started it with Paula. So, like, when, like, how did that come about? Well, in 2019, um, see, it was like it was right before COVID whenever I went down on Mount Eagle Mountain. So, after I got back, you know, I kind of started doing my homework as to what it would take to do an actual investigation. I started looking around, started purchasing a little bit of equipment. Then I thought, well, I, I want to try this. I want to actually build a team. So I went to Paula, and um, she agreed to, you know, start it with me. So we did, and she told me, she's like, well, I know this guy named Connor. I worked with him. He wants to be actually do it as well. Then we come across Eric. You know, we've known Eric for a long time. Mm-hmm. We actually worked with him at the ambulance service uh, when we first got started. And um, so we decided at that point we were just going to come up with a team. Well, it wasn't really considered a team at the point. It's just us going to have a good time. Right. So the first investigation we actually went to as medics for paranormal, we went up to Thomas House Hotel mm-hmm. up in Red Bull and Springs. So you, you know, you've been there? Yep. I mean, that place is awesome. I love it. So um, we actually went up there, and we got some of the best, best activity that I've ever gotten. Uh, for example, the REM pod sitting on the bed. We actually, you know, Sarah in room 37, mm-hmm. we brought two little baby dolls. They're like twins. We set them on the bed. We put the REM pod up beside it. had the little cat toys everywhere. And um, and she responded. She, is, I really think she appreciated that. I'm sitting across the room, and I've got my cell phone. My cell phone is my favorite piece of equipment. It really mm-hmm. is. Right. Because it can do so much. And I'm sitting here, and I'm filming over there, and all of a sudden, the REM pod starts going off. Well, Paula, she looks over at the REM pod and she's like talking to Sarah and uh, the, the REM pod stops. And as the point, as it stops, you see this orb and I'm torn on orbs, but it came right out of the REM pod, came right over and went over my left shoulder. And that's on video as well. Nice. Yeah. So like I said, I'm torn when it comes to orbs, but right. that one I have no doubt whatsoever. Yeah. See, um, I've been to the Thomas house once and it was during one of the, the, uh, events, um, Haunted weekends or whatever they're called. Ghost hunt weekends. Ghost hunt weekends. That's it. Um, you know, it was one of their events, and and my mom and my stepfather went with me, and um, they actually that was the room that they stayed in. Mm-hmm. And when I told my mom that was supposed to be like the most haunted room, of course she was kind of like, oh, oh shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, it's like you wanted to go, and uh, it was unfortunately the, the night we went it wasn't a very active night we did have some really weird shit happen when we was in the church across the street um so that was probably our most active area was the church but uh, yeah I, I definitely want to go back and my wife's been dying to go we uh we actually had planned on going going there just to spend a weekend there here a couple of months ago when some stuff fell through and we weren't able to go but and uh well, back in August, we actually had an event up there. I'm not sure if you're aware, but we had a two night event up there, and we sold sold out. Yeah, um, yeah. we were only going to do Saturday night, but you know we had sold that out within 24 hours. So we're like, okay, we got to do something. So we backed up and did a Friday night as well. Right. We joined up with Regina Blatt and her team, PPF Investigations, and we mm-hmm. had one hell of a good weekend. Yeah, the church is amazing. I hate that it's so run down; you can't go in it anymore. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, it's like the building is coming down on itself. I know that the Cole family that owns Thomas House, they tried to get some estimates on what it would take to rebuild it, and it was just like way out of the price range. No oh, man. So we did go over to the church during one point of the investigations, and you could see through the door there was a crack about three inches wide. You can actually see in there. You just can't go in. Right. So to get a response, this is actually pretty cool. Everybody that was out there, we had two of the groups out there. We kind of semicircled around the church, and we actually sang Amazing Grace. Oh, wow. You know, we joined hand. We sang Amazing Grace. And all of a sudden, the guy that was actually looking, his name was um, Caleb. He was actually looking at the door and he's like, oh, Caleb, what is it? Somebody, something just walked across the room. I just saw a shadow. You know, as Amazing Grace is going on. So, wow. That, that place is just amazing. But something did happen that weekend that broke my heart. And um, I just want to like to send a shout out to the Cole family on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are the ones that own the place. The owner, um, the matriarch, Miss Evelyn Cole, mm-hmm. she had just got out of the hospital and she was at home. Mm-hmm. So she came out on Saturday night and she sat down. I don't know if you met her when you were there. I, but I can't super, remember if I did or not. Super, super amazing woman. So she had come out and she had dinner with her group. And that was, you know, had a lot of fun. And she was um, having a good time. Well, the following morning, 
I'm sitting out on the front porch and I'm smoking a cigarette. Then Regina, she comes out and she said, hi, hey, Lee, come in. It's Miss Evelyn. So I went in there and Miss Evelyn, she was, um, you could tell that she was really disturbed. She was, you know, having trouble comprehending some things. And me and a couple of the other medics, you know, we went over there, you know, to actually talk to her, trying to find out what's going on. So I told her son, David, I said, David, I said, we need to call her an ambulance. So he's like, please do. So we called her an ambulance and she come over there and I wheeled her out to the front hallway, the front uh, parlor or the, just the front hallway. Mm -hmm. And uh, they brought the stretcher in and I said, Miss Evelyn, I said, I'm going to help you get on this stretcher and they're going to take you to the hospital and check you out. So she threw her arms around my shoulders and I put my arms under hers and mm -hmm. we stood up and I went back to look at the video later and you can just see her leaving this right here mm -hmm. while she, her arm is around me. You know, she just patting my back, put her on the stretcher and then uh, they took her to the hospital. She was in the hospital for about a week, and then she ended up passing on. Yeah. So, um, and I talked to David later on. He said, man, he said, of all the groups that we've had, we had a group of paramedics up here. Couldn't ask for better. Right. But, um, so I wanted to send my thoughts and my prayers out to the Cole family for their loss, because uh, Miss Evelyn, she was definitely one of a kind. Right. Yeah. And I've heard a lot of good things about her, and, and when I've seen everybody posting about that, I was like, man, that's terrible. And and I remember it being just right after your guys' event. I was like, man, that's. Mm. And, and you know, a lot, a couple of my guests, they even asked me, and I've I wondered about this. You know, if the veil was thin because of her, and it, like I said, we had an active weekend, and could it have been because that veil was so thin? And I never thought about it until somebody brought it up to my attention. And then I got to thinking about it. You know, and that's something know, I love. I love it when people ask questions, get me to thinking. You know, right? And 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 you never know. In in. Obviously, it was her time not much longer after that. And like you said, she might have been kind of experiencing, I don't, I don't really know what you would call it, but some of those pre-death experiences that a lot of people talk about. And it, it may have helped fuel that night for you guys. Yeah, it could have. So, it could have. And and I, and I know how much that place meant to her and her family. And, and now it kind of makes me wonder if she's going to still hang around there. It does. It does. You know, um, you know what I mean? I, I'm not going to go calling out for her. Not I mean, Oh, absolutely saying. not. But if she were to come to me, I mean, it would just like mean the world. Right. And, and I'm sure with, with as long as they've had that place and it, it is interactive as she was with all the groups that came there, it, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point she doesn't come through for somebody. Oh, I'm sure. I have no doubt about that. I mean, that was her world. Her family was there and that, yeah, you're right. It was her yeah, world. Because they actually live in, in the building, right? They do. It's got the two wings on the left and the right. If you look, looking at the building on the left, it was David and Miss Evelyn, mm -hmm. and then Daryl and Sherry and their family. They lived in the right. So yeah, right. that's that's their world. Right. All right. So now we're gonna kind of kind of turn back around and focus back on your team for a second. They all oh, do. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> it, it's all good. Um, we kind of steered off for a minute, but that's perfectly fine. That that's why I, I like doing the way I do my show. If we get kind of off subject for a minute, that's perfectly fine. But it's not. Yeah. It wasn't off subject per se, but you know what I mean. Right. So so your team likes to do like personal residences. Why, why do you like doing personal residences? Well, because it kind of fits doing like what we do as a paramedic. You know, we go to people's homes, we go in, they invite us in, you know, and they're doing everything that they can to help us help them. Mm -hmm. So it's like I said, it's kind of like helping the living and the dead, you know, because whatever is in the house, if there is anything in the house, uh, we want to try to either help it move on or make peace or say, you know, just – whatever the solution is going to be. Right. So that's really kind of got how it got started. So me and Paula, like I said, we, um, her and I, we were teammates up until this past few months. And I'll tell you about that. Uh, we had team members come on board. We had them leave. And, you know, we, we've probably helped. I don't, I don't know how many residences we have helped. We helped a couple of businesses and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been very rewarding, but um, like I said, just the whole helping like you do as a paramedic, that's, that's kind of been our catch. Right. Now, was there ever a time where, say, somebody reached out to you guys and was explaining some stuff, then you were just like, you know, this sounds kind of like conjuring type stuff. I don't know if I want to go do this or not. I have not come across that yet, because even if it is conjuring stuff like that, we've got resources and we've got people mm -hmm. that can come in to help. Right. Now, I'm not going to, you know, people that are conjuring, in my opinion, it's almost a mistake to make. You know, and I'm not going to fault anybody for making mistakes. You know, we learn from our mistakes and we move on. Right. One could actually argue that using a voice recorder is conjuring as well, but I don't think so. I think it's eliciting. Mm -hmm. But no, I've not been like scared or anything to go anywhere and nothing really gave me sec or a pause on it. Right. Now, 
if I do have something that sounds like a little conjuring or Amityville or anything like that, I do have a pastor friend of mine. I will call him up and I will talk to him before right. I go. And um, we'll talk about the possibilities and what to expect. And there's been a couple where he wanted me to come and get some holy water just to take with me. Mm -hmm. But I told him, I said, I'm good on it right now. So we'll just see what it is, you know. Right. And we would go. And so far, we've been fortunate, you know. Well, see, that, that, that's why, you know, our, our team's kind of hesitant on, on doing personal residences because the two or three people that's reached out to us, like the stuff they've described going on in their home, I'm like, man, I was like, I don't know if we're equipped to handle that type of stuff. And and it's another one of those things, uh, another reason we kind of don't don't want to do it, one, for that reason, because like I said, if it's some real demonic shit going in the, on in the house, I was like, I don't want to bring that stuff home to my family, you know? Of course, absolutely. But um, it's also one of those things, say, even if it's a mild case of, of, of a haunting, and we go in this house, and we're in their house, you know, five, six, seven hours, and we capture absolutely nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And then we turn around and tell these people, hey, you know, we didn't capture anything. Are they going to sit there and think, okay, well, maybe I'm just crazy? Like, how would you handle that if that if that's happened to you guys? How did you handle that? Well, we would sit down, and we would actually tell them about any evidence or a lack of, and we would just explain to it, you know, the, the spirits, they are once people, hopefully, you know, otherwise you are with the demonic. <clears throat> Pardon me. We would tell them which would, the activity was not, you know, there for us. It's not saying that it's not haunted. I right. said they may respond to you a lot more than they do us. They don't know us. They don't know us at all. Mm -hmm. And what I tell a lot of people on an investigation, usually we'll have to go back a second time because we it's almost like we have to build trust with the uh, spirits that are there. They have to learn who we are. They're not gonna they're gonna be sitting over there and be like, oh Lord, we got strangers. Let's go do some ghost shit, you know. But <laughs> right. But um, like I said, it's a building trust. But I tell people, I said, you know, it's not that it's not haunted. It's not saying that the activity is not there. Mm -hmm. They just may prefer you as to us. Right. And, and see, and if that's another thing that it, in my head, like I, I know that would be like the right thing to say. But at the same time, I kind of put myself in their shoes and I'm still thinking, okay, maybe they don't believe me and I'm just going nuts. So that's why we're kind of on the fence about doing personal residences. And we've been, we've talked about it and, you know, I've told you, you know, we've done my grandmother's house a few times, but you yeah. know, at the same time, that's somebody we know and she's going to believe us no matter what we tell her. So, and say it's somebody that's we've never met before. And they're like, oh, well, these people are, are full of it. I, I know what's going on. It's just one of those things that's always been up in the air for us personally well, as a team. So, Well, working as a paramedic for a long time, we get a call from a, calls from a lot of people who are full of it. Right. You know, they call out just because of the stupidest reasons that you're ever going to imagine. It's too early for that, Damien. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so it's kind of like that with the paranormal, you know. I mean, you got to take everything with a grain of salt until you actually get in there and experience it yourself. Right. I'm not going to call anybody crazy. I'm gonna. I may think to myself, "Good Lord, these are some wild ass tales." Right. But you know what's going on with them? It's real. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's just in their mind or in their, you know, just in their head, it's real to them. And that's what I try right. to remember. Because even like these people that call nine one one because they've got a hangnail, which I've mm -hmm. had that happen. Oh man, it's real to them. Mm -hmm. you know the the crisis right so i don't know if that answered your question or not <laughs> uh, it, it did it did and so you've been one of the many people that's told me not to investigate your own home why why do you abide by that rule because um if the home is peaceful leave well enough alone first of all uh, secondly, you might have to uh, be prepared if it could be a family member or anything, and you're going to have to make your own peace with that. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, if you were to go in and investigate your own home and you ramp up activity, then there you are sitting in it. <laughs> so, like I said, it's just more of air on the side of caution and just, you know, precautionary measure and nothing else. All right. See, here's where I've kind of always been kind of on the fence about that. See, your, your answer is kind of the same as, as a lot of people I've asked. How was it different, say, if you come in and investigate my house as if I'm doing it myself? Wouldn't that be like the exact same thing kind of getting stirred up? Yeah, it would. But you would also know that you didn't do it. You know, right. you're not going to have your wife blame you or. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, 
uh, we haven't listened to that rule. We, we've investigated our houses, our house. And something else. You've times. actually, you're going to have actually a special bond with that house. That is mm -hmm. your home. That's your safe space. Yeah. That's your domicile. So that's the place where your family is safe. Right. And if anything were to change, you don't want to be responsible for that. Right. And, and nothing bad's ever happened here. And that's why we kind of, you know, nothing really seems out of the ordinary than what normally does happen before mm -hmm. we investigate it. it. It's constantly just, you know, knocks or we'll hear whispers here and there. I mean, it's it's knocked stuff off the wall a couple of times and, and slapped something off our counter. and But it's never been anything to where like, okay, we have to move now. Right. That's just a typical day in an investigator's house right there. Right. So, and before I even came along, before I met my wife, she said there was kind of stuff kind of happening here to begin with. But she said it kind of amped up a little bit when I came into the picture. So it's kind of one of those things. She's like, well, maybe something came with you then just kind of added to this. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe, but. It absolutely could have. Absolutely could have. Because, like uh, I said, it's to me, it's just um, it's just a personal thing, you know, that you get you share with your house. Right. You know, like I said, if it's not bothering you, leave well enough alone there. I mean, it does. It doesn't bother us. We just want to know who it is, more or less. You know. And a lot of people that I will tell this to, Damien, is a lot of people. They're going to try to pull out the Parker Brothers Ouija board. Uh -huh. They're going to try to lot the count. A lot of people are going to try to contact the wrong ways. Mm -hmm. So I never. That's another reason I never provoke to do your own house. Yeah, we 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 don't we don't do the Ouija boards or any of that stuff. When we simply sit down, turn a recorder on, and say, "Who are you?" Same. Same. <laughs> Now, so, I do have a Ouija board in my front closet. When I was younger, I was stupid. I bought one. I tried it twice. Never got no response. I like mean, I said, it's Parker Brothers. The planchets right. glow in the dark, you know, right. thank you for what it is. But that thing is still sitting in my front closet. I'm scared to throw it away. I'm not going to lie because I don't <laughs> want it to find its way back. So right. it's up there. It doesn't bother me. I doesn't bother it. Right. And, uh, I mean, I, I had one when I was a kid, too. And uh, I remember the one time I actually remember using it was with Actually, who our team's name after I we was using it with Keith. Yeah. And we was at his house. And I you know, we were young teenagers, so I don't know if, if like he was moving it or just self consciously I was moving it, didn't realize it, but it's but it was moving and we were getting answers to our questions. So we it was you know, that was the one of the only time I ever really played with and I think I eventually I think my mom sold it in a yard sale or something, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, pass that on to somebody else. Right. So but that's that's nothing we, we incorporate in our investigations. So um No, I just like I said, to me just that just opens doors. Yeah. You know, a lot of people they they won't close that door either. Mm -mm. No, I you'll sit there and I'll we'll watch these shows and and they'll bring bring out the widget board and they'll do their thing. And the one thing my wife always notices is they never close it. They never say goodbye or yeah, nothing. Like exactly. That. And she's like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so so how many investigations do you think you've been on since you started doing this oh god um Be between personal residences and like your pay to play paces oh let's see that's a hard question to answer i would say probably anywhere from 80 to 100 oh damn wow i mean yeah just and it may not and let me put it this way you can almost investigate any place that you're at i believe every place is haunted to agree right to a degree but i would say between residences businesses and you know let me back that maybe 60 to 80 yeah that's yeah, still, but still but still you that's know. still quite a bit in three years no 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 that's not that's that's since back in 2013 since the first time paul and i investigated oh okay i, I was saying yeah. like when you actually started your team oh no 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 that's just since me and paula first investigated back okay in 13, okay 13 or 14 somewhere in there I got you. I got you. So what's some of your favorite places that you investigated so far? Uh, one of my favorite places always is Thomas House Hotel. And the only reason is because the, one big reason the family is so good to us. They pretty much open the door to their home and turn it over and says, hey, go have fun with it. But um, they cook us great food and uh, lots of activity usually. Lots of activity usually. So that's probably going to be my number one spot. Mm -hmm. um, I have done Octagon Hall. One of the best places was actually the Washoe Club out in um, yeah Nevada. Right. So yeah, that I, one, that one was pretty epic. 
Yeah, I was super jealous when you told me you guys were heading out there with with. Uh, I know that's why I told you <laughs> with Regina and <laughs> with Regina and her team. I was I was like, man, that's that's some shit right there. Oh, that's, that's that's awesome. And even if it wasn't an act of night, just to say you investigated that place. Absolutely, and that, it wasn't was an just, act, It wasn't very active. I mean, there was a little bit. I saw a side of Regina that I've never seen that night before. Oh yeah, yeah. This was kind of weird. In one of the upstairs offices of the Wash Show, they had an office, and they said that the ladies of the night, that's what they called them. They say if you call them hookers, you call them prostitutes, you get a bloody nose. So we you know, we played it safe. Right. Well, one of the um, the madams, I guess you would call her, I'm not sure, that her name was Miss Julia, and she would actually set the gentleman up with the ladies of the night. So we walked into the office, and I'm sitting here talking to Miss Julia. I'm saying, Miss Julia, I'm here. I'm, I need to set myself up with a couple of ladies. All of a sudden, Regina, she looks at me, and I have never seen this look into her. I don't know. This this scared me. She pointed her finger. She said, he is lying. I said, what? She said, you're lying. She was dead serious, dead angry, <laughs> and ready to out me as lying about wanting these ladies of the night. Wow. So um, Paula and Leah, they actually kind of, I think it was Leah, but they actually kind of shun her to the door i guess you know we go outside and we're like regina what happened she's like i have no idea she says what happened and um i don't know it's almost like they just went through her to point me out as you know telling them not telling the truth on it <laughs> but the look on her face i won't forget it i mean that's crazy it was not like it, it wasn't her i know right. that it wasn't and uh, you know ever since that night though i investigated with regina and um i think a lot of her I respect her so much as an investigator, and it's almost like her and I are just kindred spirits whenever we investigate together. Right. <laughs> you know, and it's great when you come across that and make that connection. Right. So, so you're you're Adam and she's Amy, huh? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I suppose. I never thought about that. That's good. <laughs> there you go. So, what's what's some places that that's that's on your paranormal bucket list that you want to hit up at some point? Well, the one that I would love and I would probably get my right arm to do is Tennessee State Penitentiary. Oh man. <laughs> and it is so sad that they're not allowing that there that's one of the best places but aside from that um brushy mountain is one mm-hmm. i do want to investigate that one south pittsburgh hospital is mm-hmm. another one and um oh god there's one in Vir- virginia or west virginia it was saint Al- albans saint albans yeah albans yeah that yeah. one i don't know that one's just like calling out yeah R- regina said she had a weird experience up there and yeah uh, that, that that that's a place I've been wanting to. Check. I want to say it's in West Virginia. I think it's West Virginia, right? So yeah, that 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 place is on my list as well. And and you talk about the the old Tennessee State Prison. You know, that's Josh. You know, my co-founders. That's that's his number one spot. Yeah. And he's like, man, he's like, it su- sucks so much that they won't because they could turn that into another Brushy Mountain. They could do so much with that place. And they even, could charge what they wanted to there. Yeah. And, and even with the you know the portion that got destroyed by the tornado i mean you know that they could use those bricks to kind of make another makeshift building to incorporate into whatever they want to and still have absolutely it, and still have it as a part of the the attraction so i mean I, I wish somebody could convince the state to say hey i will sell this to you this is what i want to do to it and well, that, it's, that place would be a money maker, man. It would. It scares me to no end thinking that it's at risk of being torn down. Mm-hmm. That's that yeah, that's, will just that'll be a shame. But yeah. yeah, I mean that's just a few of the places that are on my bucket list. I mean, pretty much anybody says, "Hey, you want to investigate somewhere?" I'm there right. most times. Well, I know, I know. We've discussed, you know, you joining up with us and tackling Brushy Mountain. So we may try to have to, we may have to do that next year. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, like I said, my team's coming back together. We're um. Well, I say where it's me, you know. <laughs> so let me, uh, can I tell a little bit about what happened recently? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Paula Hernandez, we actually, we started the Medics for Paranormal. Well, we just got to where we were having different visions and, you know, nothing bad. I mean, nothing bad at all. We were still just tight as ever. We just decided that we just have different avenues that we're going to pursue. So mm-hmm. we kind of made a collective decision, you know, we're just going to not destroy Medics for Paranormal, but she's going to exit and uh, just follow her passion, which is another direction of the paranormal. And mm-hmm. I absolutely wish her the very best of luck with it. I mean, right. you know, we spent a lot of years together and we're still going to be good friends on top of mm-hmm. all this. 
you know, we're just going to be kind of, she's going to tell me about her experiences and I'm going to be telling her about mine. And, uh, you know, we're just going to take medics for, for paranormal and just move it on up. You know, we're just going to right. start pushing forward again. Like I said, right now it is just me, Eric Freeman. He, um, uh, he's a honorary member on the side. He helps me out whenever I can and whenever he can. And, you know, he's been absolutely great with that. Right. I know I've investigated with you, like up at um, the Sumner County Museum, uh -huh. you know, and we worked really well together as well, Damien. Yeah. And that's why I'm looking forward to doing, like you said, Rushy Mountain. Yeah. And I had no had no idea about that place. I, I remember, I, I don't remember if it was you or Eric reached out to me about, about helping out. And I was like, you know, I'm free. I, I don't have anything going on that night. Uh, you had I a cold. I remember that. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was about a week after... Uh, we went to Scott County Jail. I was I had a real bad cough that that night too. And, yeah, uh, and that was my first public event actually doing any kind of hosting one or helping out with one. And I didn't know what the hell to do. And I was like, I've got this really cool video from last weekend if you want to see it. And I remember Eric said when he brought his group up to where I was, he was like, "Man, everybody wants to see this video." And uh, that's one of the best videos I've ever seen. Kudos to you for capturing. Man, it, it's... You it's, scream it's, like a girl, but... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, the, what the hell would you expect of me, you know? <laughs> it was, I was actually uh, showing somebody that video not even a week ago. Yeah, it was... So that, That's one of my favorite places to date, and it's actually been our, one of our most active locations, so... And that's actually on a bucket list as well. Eric said something about wanting to go up there, and I told him I'd be all about it. Yeah, it, it's... We we went again a couple weekends ago, and it wasn't as active as that first time, but it was still an active night for us. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm I'm still combing through everything. Yeah, as you know, the evidence review takes so long, especially when you have very limited time to sit down and do it. Now, I'll tell you, one of the my favorite places is actually um, in Franklin, Kentucky, and no, it's not Octagon Hall. It's um, Old Stone Jail up there. Have you mm -hmm. been there? I have. We went there last last summer. I, the jail was minimal on activity, but over in the upstairs of the museum, back to where that car elevator is, mm -hmm. right there, man, it was a hot spot. See, I, I guess we just hit it on one of those dead nights because we didn't really have activity in either place. And and since we've started doing this, we haven't had very many of those dead nights, but that was one of them. But we want to go back because we've kind of crapped at our style and stuff a little bit, and we didn't really incorporate the uh, the jail lingo like we have because you know josh works at, at in corrections and he's kind uh -huh. of incorporated that that jail talk into places when we go to jails and stuff and that's really helped amplify activity for us so yeah absolutely so we definitely want to go back there absolutely so like i said I'm, we're just getting geared up next weekend i know we're going to talk about that later mm -hmm. but uh next weekend is really what we've been focusing on putting our energy into right but i'm really i want to go back i want to do another event at thomas house and bring the people in um especially you know to help support the family after miss evelyn passed you know there's a lot of reasons yeah so and i would love it if you would come up there i don't know what i can do to get you up there dude <laughs> well the I one offer to pay your way <laughs> well the one weekend you, you had done it you uh you had you had planned to do it it was a weekend of my wife's birthday and she's she's definitely not big on the public events and she was like i just don't want to do a public event and yada yada and i was like i get it so it it may just end up being me, you know. <laughs> okay, bring it on. But, uh, and you mentioned the Paracon. Uh, we're going to get that here in just a minute. I got a couple more things I want to touch on before we get to that. Yeah. So what's the most scared you think you've been during an investigation? Oh, the most scared. Probably was at Octagon Hall. It was in the basement. One of my uh, co-investigators, we was in the room. I don't know if you've been to Octagon. We have. In, in the basement where the portal is. One of my mm -hmm. investigators, it was almost like I had to fight him to get him out of there. Oh, man. Yeah, so he was actually involved in the activity, and he kept trying to go back down to the basement by himself. And it got to the point to where on the second night of the investigation, we just pretty much had to shut it down. Mm. It was affecting people, and that bothered me a lot. Right. So um, it was just more or less how the house treated us. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it was even to the point, well, I don't know how I'm going to put this, but when we was leaving, it was dark. It was foggy. It was in the middle of the night. Like I said, we shut it down. We got out. Mm -hmm. um, everybody else had left me. I was there by myself, and I was down there closing the big metal gates, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I look up in the house and I'm kidding you not, you know, in the basement, in one of the windows, I see this flash of light. Mm. It's almost like somebody, it was like somebody shined a flashlight, turned it on and off. Right. As I'm leaving and there was no car. This was about two o'clock in the morning. And um, I'm like, my house, I know that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I guess that right, that right there, just the way that it affected my team. Right. That, that bothered me more than anything. As far as, you know, like being just flat out scared. Right. No, but um, not yet. And it's coming. I know it is. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll that... be the one screaming like a girl. But like I said, when it affects people, that that affects me. That that octagon hall, man, that that is a beast of a building, and it, it lives up to its reputation as being one of the most haunted places in the South. It is. And that was, you know, my wife's very first investigation. And whatever is in that basement does not like females whatsoever. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't. It, it, it flat out. It's like, hey, I don't – pretty much just told us I don't like women. And so my wife and another lady, they just started their asses upstairs, and we mm -hmm. don't want – but we experienced shit. You know, every single room we went into, we we heard growling in the nursery two or three different times. Um, Whatever was there eventually affected my wife and, and the other teammate with us uh, to the point where, you know, they were having pain in their stomach and, and, the, and their shoulder blades and mm – -hmm. Yes. And when we went to leave, I shit you not, man, the the Miss Deborah that was over it at the time. I remember Miss Deborah. She was like, Something's gonna try to get you guys to come back here. She goes, but just keep going. And I kid you not, we you know, we punched it in their address on the GPS and that thing re tried to reroute us three or four times to go back there. And it's, like you said, it's something about it. Barry gone uh bear, uh -huh. whenever we actually went to investigate. I've never been to an investigation when the when somebody told me they said bring your firearm. Right. You know, we've had a lot of cryptids <laughs> back in the back. You know we've had right. you know, um, Bigfoot sightings. We've mm -hmm. had portals. If you see like a blur and there's a blue light, don't go near it. Lord knows where you'll end up. Right. But, but yeah, um, and then you talk about the firearm, you know, because they have mountain lions roaming yeah, around. Mountain lions as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think the coolest story that they told us that night was about the ghost train. The, you know, the, the people I've seen kind of in behind, and yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, was, absolutely. I, was like, I was like, man, that would be some crazy ass shit to see. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's a place we're actually talking about going back to next year. Because, like I said, when we went the first time, it was a public event, and it was, you know, there's probably about 15 or 20 of us there, but we kind of got to venture off and do our own little thing. Yeah. But, but we want to go and just actually have the building to ourselves. And, like the I said, we. We've, we've crafted our style and stuff like that so we're a little bit more prepared now kind of the than... first time that i went to it was a public event it was during mm -hmm. the month of october and they have a lot of fundraising events there yeah so you know the room with the big table where everybody sits around mm -hmm. out there in front of the house mm -hmm. and then you got the little foyer that goes to the front door somebody that night they swore they saw a white apparition standing in that foyer and i, not, I had no doubt you know nothing like that well anyway went on about our business well then the one night that we were the first night that we were there with uh, medics for paranormal connor we're in that room and he looks and he does a double take i said you know i'm like what what are you looking at he said there was a white shadow in that front foyer two counts two different knots no relation whatsoever but you know my wife's thought, seen the same thing so yeah so that's right there in that by the front door correct uh -huh. yeah yeah well she didn't actually see it by the front door she's seen it you know, because here's the big table, then you got the room over here to the left. You've seen it in that yeah. room. Okay. And because uh, right. I, I had flashed, uh, I was taking some pictures, and I had flashed, you know, two or three times. And she was like, check your phone. And I'm like, what are you talking? She goes, I swear to you, I just seen it. She said it looked like a woman in white just kind of just walked across the room. And I was like, you sure it wasn't my flash? She goes, no, I seen it after your flash went off. And so, of course, I checked my phone, and we didn't capture anything. But, yes, yeah, you've seen that, se that same yeah. thing. And I do believe it is one of the, um, the originals. Now, I caught a really interesting EVP. We were up in the medical room. It was Paula and I. We were sitting here just doing an EVP session. And one of the responses on who is here with us, we get a name of uh, Craig Williams. So I asked Barry Gone, I said about it, and he said, well, that's interesting. He said he's a doctor. He don't ever really come out and talk to anybody. Right. But he was the second owner of Octagon Hall. Oh, wow. And and he actually was involved in some stuff I'm not going to go into. Barry did not. Barry said that they don't publicize this. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'm right. not going to betray that. But said that he was the second owner of Octagon Hall. 
and um, he was into some naughty stuff. Oh, man. That's crazy. All right, so I got one more thing I want to touch on before we get to the Paracon. Sure. Are we allowed to talk about Creep Street Productions? <laughs> I know you can't uh, give away too much. I cannot. But the best thing that I can actually give away, it's going to be a new kind of concept on mm -hmm. something you might see on television. Right. Uh, go to Creep Street, Creep Street Productions and hit the like button. Mm -hmm. You're going to, we're going to kind of get some more videos that come out. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, Damien, <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be interesting. It's yeah, you know, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on the promos and things that we're actually doing right now, and um, we're gonna. It's going to be something new, and it's, it's going to be great. Right, and and it, like it's I said, a television show, and I, I'm not going to go any further than that. They, because... uh, you know, they have released that one little teaser. Yeah, just from that. I don't know, minute, minute and a half teaser. It, it's they, that long. draws you in, doesn't it? it? It already does. And I'm like, okay, what what are they doing? And and I guess the name of it, I guess they put the name in there. The the other's side. Yes, the and other's I'm, side. And I'm like, okay. I was like, I, I kinda I kinda understand the name. I was like, but what is it about? I'm like, I was like, I can't wait until this actually gets released. And I'm so happy for you that you that you're gonna be involved in this and, and Regina as well. And and I'm looking forward to this coming out. All right. Yeah, believe me, I understand. I am as well. Every time I watch that little teaser, you know, it's just like it mm -hmm. takes you back there. I don't right. want to release the location or anything like that that we were at, but it was a location that's on a lot of people's bucket list. I'll put it mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. And you saw over the buildings on the teaser, man. It was massive. It was a lot. It yep. was a very fun two nights. Met some wonderful crews, met some wonderful people. And I really do look forward to working with them again. Well, I will say, I know the location. Yeah. Um, and even if I didn't know beforehand, I knew from the teaser, I was like, I know exactly that. I know that building and it's on my bucket list. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to more little teasers before it actually, before it actually releases. So, well, Regina, she had a little, like an intro video that actually was yep. released last week. And for the next eight weeks, save your cast members going to have a little video coming out. Right. So I don't know when mine will be. I don't know if it's going to be this week or, you know, or the last, I have no idea. Right. But, um yeah go on to creep creep street productions hit mm -hmm. the like button see the updates and um show us some support i mean because it's yep. going to be it's going to be great yeah and, and like i was talking to you yesterday you know i've actually already got them people lined up to be on the show when it kind of yeah. gets closer to being released and stuff so oh absolutely yes i look forward to it there's wonderful people wonderful directors uh the producer out in texas she's amazing and and i get to work with regina there you go all right, October twenty second, which October. when when this is released, it actually be just a couple of days away because we're going to release this a little bit earlier than normal. So, October twenty second, let's talk about Phantom Paws and Historic Calls. Phantom Paws and Historic Calls is going to be the first paranormal convention held in Middle Tennessee that we actually know of. Uh, it's you know it's going to start out small. We're going to look forward to grow. We're going to have different paranormal teams come out and we're going to set up tables. Let's see. I think I know one called RKB. I think they're coming out, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I, I've heard about that. I've heard about them. They seem yeah. pretty cool. So <laughs> that's not what I know. Absolutely. Uh, got a lot of other vendors coming out. I know that we've got a few people that actually tell fortune. There's a woman she can tell the future by. I think it's Bones. Um, what it is, it's going to be a convention. It's going mm -hmm. to be completely nonprofit. We are going to take every proceed and we're going to divide it up between two different charities. One's going to be a haunted cemetery in Memphis, Tennessee, mm -hmm. called the Old Riley Cemetery. It's you know owned by Jack Br or Jack Brewer. Mm -hmm. He is um, he runs it and he's trying to keep it up the best that he can. He opens it up to people when they want, and uh, we're looking to show him some love. And also the other half, we're going to go and to the Senior Dog Sanctuary in Mount Juliet. Mm -hmm. And we're going to provide them because, you know, the little fur balls that ain't got nobody, you know, we want right. to show them some love as well. Right. So we got some guest speakers coming out. I know we got, I forgot his name and I'm not even going to try to, but I know he has uh, done a lot of research with the Bell Witch. Uh-huh. Uh, we got Alan Searcy coming out. And like I said, we're going to have about four or five guest speakers. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some food trucks there. We were hoping to have some of the senior dogs come out, but that's not going to happen because it's, yeah a big deal to get people to come in and you know we'll you know, bring them out i mean right but like i said this is our it's our first year doing it first annual and um 
we're going to be doing it more and more every year. You know, I want to invite everybody to come out. It's going to be from 10 to 6. And it's going to be at the Wilson County Fairgrounds. $10 admission at the door. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can make your paranormal dreams come true or, you know, right there. You can come out and meet Damien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I'm going to be there along with my team, minus my wife, because she doesn't make appearances. She's She is going to be there. She's going to be good as an attendee. But um, well, Medics for Paranormal is actually going to be hosting this with Regina Blood and her mm -hmm. team, PPF Investigation. Yep, Regina is actually the one that brought it to us with the idea. So thank you, Regina. I want to thank you for that. It's been a hell of a year trying to get it ready, <laughs> but things are looking better now than they have, and, and really looking forward to the event. Looking forward to meeting all the people. We've uh, put up some event pages on our web pages, Phantom Paws and Historical Cause on Facebook, as well as. Medics for Paranormal or PPF Investigation. Mm -hmm. You know, we get a lot of response right there on a lot of potential on having a pretty damn good crowd, and I'm excited. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a good turnout because I know um a lot of my past guests are going to be there. Eric's going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, Mid-10 Paranormal, I've had them on the show. They're going to yeah. be there. Um, Apparitions Among Us, they've been on the show. They're supposed to be there. Um and it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be cool as hell. So I mean, I'm hoping that it's going to be bigger than what we can handle. You know, I'm right? Like, absolutely. I'm, everything, you know, because, e everything sell out. All the food trucks sell out. Just, just blow it out of the water. Yeah, I mean, if I had to, I'd say, hey, Damien, come over here. I'm putting you to work, dude. <laughs> right. So, um, no, I mean, it's it's going to be a good response. I think I'm hoping the weather cooperates, but we are going to be indoors a lot. So, right. You know, it's gonna and, uh, it's gonna be really really cool. Jack, and, uh, Brewer, like I said, he's coming over from Memphis. Right. Um just excited I mean, and, and and this this is the home stretch man it's less than a week away and it's less than a week away and like oh I said, my god it's less than a week away <laughs> it is and like i said when this episode drops it'll be two days away um and i've actually i've, I've been gathering up some goodies i'm going to give out to people we got some you know bracelets and, and stickers and magnets and i've I bought two big ass bags of candy today i'm going to hand out to, to people and stuff so it's we're just going to make a, candy we're just going to make a good time out of, out of, out of all of it I mean, absolutely. Like I said, we um we had a few sales, uh, pre-sales on it, mm -hmm. but we decided, you know what, we're not doing pre-sale. Let's just make it. We're just going to go at the door, ten bucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, really excited about seeing everybody to come out and support us. Well, like I said, I'm looking forward to it, and I know I've I've been promoting as much as I can between my personal page and my team page. I've been promoting it on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I, I tried to contact people to help you guys out to get some vendors in for you. Um, I know I got. You know, mid ten and apparition among us. I was, I told them about it, and uh, and they contacted I'm, you guys, and so yeah. I'm a big fan of mid ten's page. I'm, I love seeing their stuff. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're they're pretty cool people. Um, we're actually talking about trying to team up with them sometime next year too. So, um, next year may be a big big team up between a bunch of teams because uh, there's a lot of teams I want to work with too. So, well, nothing like me though. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, Lee, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, and talking about your experiences and everything else and, and, and the Paracon. If people want to look up Medics for Paranormal, how do they do that? Uh, just go to Facebook and look up Medics, M-E-D-I-C-S, for the number four, Paranormal, Medics for Paranormal. Uh, that'll pull it up right there and um, hit the like button, say hi. Any questions? Um, want to come out and investigate with us? I mean, whatever you want to do. All right. So, well, like I said, Lee, I really appreciate it. I've been trying to get you on the show for a while, and I know with your work schedule, it's, it's been it's been tough, but we, we finally got it done, man. Absolutely, and this ain't the last time I hope. Oh, absolutely not. We'll definitely have you back on at some point down the road, man. All right. Well, Damien, thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed talking to you as always. Absolutely, and uh, everybody, we hope to see you Saturday. And the, the little, uh, I knew I was going to mess up right at the end. I always do it. <laughs> We hope to see everybody Saturday, October 22nd at the Wilson County Fairgrounds in Lebanon, Tennessee mm -hmm. for the Phantom Paws and Historic Calls Paracon. First annual, first one. First annual and not going to be the last. No, absolutely not. It's going to be a great time. All righty, Lee. Well, thank you again, and we'll holler at you guys later. All right. Sounds good, Damien. Thank right. you. Bye-bye.